come on nobody's asking you to stop going to church we're just asking you to stop going to a church where you're going to be taught things that are going to affect you negatively and impact you negatively and your children negatively for the rest of your life we just want you to stop going to those churches where they encourage you to not use your senses they encourage you to suspend your reality and to just believe that things are going to do well with you, that are going to have a merited favor, that you should just hope and pray and that you don't understand the things of the spirit. You got your senses from above. They are given to you for a reason. When anybody asks you to suspend your senses and to not think about things and to just hope for the best and pray, pray without ceasing and fasting and that you're going to get a merited favor and things are going to work for you, they're setting you up to not use your mind, to not use your rational mind, so that when they begin to do strange things to you that don't work in your favor, things that are negative to you and negatively impact your life, you're going to be telling yourself that you cannot understand the things of the spirit, and so you're just going to accept whatever explanation they give for the things that they do to you and with you. This is Despera Lounge, remember? Here we talk about conscious empowerment. We want to unlearn the things that have brought us misery, the things that have brought us to wrong decisions and wrong results. And we want to just... We learn things that will help us to take better decisions through facts and conscious empowerment. Welcome again. Now let's get into today's video. Listen and I hope that this impacts your life positively. Now I want you to watch the two videos that I'm going to play here and then let's have a little bit of a George Yeah. 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 As you can see, the lady up of the screen, say 36 years old lady um worse because she don't buy as a result of say she go do nyash say she go do nyash for lucky as she enter inside there and they give her injection let's say the injection and for the process before they start the main operation so as they give her the injection from there now where the thing end be that so as they give her the injection she lose consciousness she starts to the grabs for air and boom 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 like play like play she buy so um if she go even now they ask her say what happened to you she go say now nah, she go do nyash what a sad way to leave earth what a sad way to leave earth now um a lot of people do this thing and they do it successfully you understand this which are the ones that you see but a lot of them don't get successful with it now only few story they come up a lot of young ladies they buy through these things see beautiful lady like this what till you define Fine woman, like what are you looking for? Eh? Low self-esteem and peer pressure, societal pressure. Every woman for Lagos now get nyash. It's so sad. This is not the right way to leave this earth, man. It's not the right way to leave this earth. Our mothers before, our mothers before, plenty of them were married. How did they marry them? Even the ones I know, people mother where we say they be like I. My mother not even get nyash. My mother no get here, my mother fly. And when no get low self-esteem, I don't know what God do for now. Women when no get low self-esteem. You don't know what God has done to you. You don't know. Women that don't look at other women and say, I wish to be like her. You don't know. Women that don't get pressured from the society. Because if people hear nyash, nyash, nyash on social media, it's saying every man like nyash. It's saying every man like nyash. It's not every man that like nyash. Yeah. If everybody gets some people like women will be like a rope of trouser, will be, be like broom. Some people they queue for all those models. I don't just know. Leave yourself the way you are. If you know if you go gym, go get the nyash. Leave on. Alright, uh behind me is the United Methodist Church of Nigeria. As you can see, the church has been locked. Today is Sunday. The church has been locked. What was the reason? You see that they fought in the church, a lot of things was broken down to the altar it got really messy the members started exchanging hands you know at the end of the day the police came and the police locked the church now the alleged reason as to why this happened is because the methodist the headquarters which is outside nigeria authorized these ones that they have allowed the marriage of gay people you understand homosexuality is not allowed so they instructed these guys that they must allow homosexuality to happen in the church and this guy said, no, the bishop here said, no, it's not allowed. We cannot accept it. Instead, we would rather change the name of the church in Nigeria to Global Methodist Church. So they started saying, oh, because it's time for you to retire, you don't want to retire. So they said they are going to bring in their own bishop all the way from abroad to come and head the church. And they will fund that bishop to come and head the church so that he can power homosexuality in Nigeria. So the police have shut down this place. And as you all know, 
they shut it down the police shut it down because first of all because they were fighting inside the church and secondly you know nigeria we don't allow homosexuality so of course i would have taken you inside but the church is locked today is sunday i would have taken you inside but the church is locked but hopefully we'll see what's happened next i'll keep you guys up to the story why can't you do like reporter again don't be the touch you understand we both don't instruct them say it is a must may they spread the gospel so they don't love the church in a big church eh? take a show the church big church is still under full construction yeah the big church full under construction the inside very massive so but then again within nigeria more they watch it to go happen don't play it's in love Anyways, Mona watched the complete video. So what did you see in those videos? What did you take away from those videos? Because before now, I would have had a different reaction to what happened to that girl. I would have said, well, she kind of deserves it if she can't have self-esteem and she's looking for validation from other people. But I don't think that that mindset is right i don't think that that thinking is right because if you come to think about it now i understand that this girl is a product of society and like many people like her who make those choices it's not really something that they've chosen themselves they've not chosen nobody chooses to not have self-esteem let's begin to understand that let's see the psychology behind it and let's see how this happens let's try to extend grace to people and try to understand how they got to be who they are let's look at it this way before now i used to deride people who went to do bbls i would be saying if anything happens to you and in fact with a story like this i would say if anything happens to you you deserve it why are you looking for validation from other people but I want us to think inwards instead when we see things happen around us. Let's not rush to judge. Let's look at people with compassion and with grace. And that way we can also be reflective of our own selves. Because guess what? Some of the people that you see that you are proud of, that you feel are on the right path and doing the right thing. It's the same thing that they're doing. They're wanting validation from. They're wanting validation from other people. Today is Sunday, the 1st of September, and I met a girl today who said that, you know, there's been a lot of issues in the past couple of months with religion in Nigeria and the churches and the pastors. And people are speaking against a lot of things about the churches, a lot regarding money as well, and the offerings and the tithes. So this girl that I met today said, that when the pastor said that they should give an offering for the first day of the month, she side-eyed him. She wasn't happy about that, but she went ahead and gave the money. And I was like, why would you do that? And she said, because if she didn't, she would be looked at as having an evil spirit or something. So you see, it's the same thing. What she did was give that offering, even though she didn't want to give it, because she didn't want them to have a certain opinion of her. But that's the same thing with the girl who goes to do the BBL. And that is the problem of our society. And that is a problem that stems from our religiosity. People cannot understand when we say that religion is a big problem in the society. What it does is that it makes people not be authentic. And when you're not authentic, it means that the, well, the point is we don't have sincerity in our behavior. We don't have sincerity in our actions. And this permits every other aspect of life in things that we do. Once we're not going with a sincere heart, there are going to be problems for the people that we're doing them for and even for ourselves. And if you can, if you're still not seeing the connection between this and religion in the country, the bottom line is that you're just stuck on religion and church and your idea of God and the pastors because these people taught these things to you. Those of us who speak against these things, are we not Christians like the rest of you? Yes, we are. We just want things to be done properly. We don't want people selling ideas to you that are going to help you to take actions that will bring misery in your lives. That misery that you have, you think it doesn't concern me, it does concern me because you're going to bring it into the decisions that you take that are going to affect things that are also going to affect me. So even if I didn't care about you and it's only myself I care about, you see that what we're trying to do is for the betterment of all of us so it is our business because whatever one person does 
listen to yourself whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers that you do unto me and love your neighbor as yourself and even if i didn't want to the thing is this is a, a natural law of life but even if i chose not to the moment that i don't look out for my brother whatever happens is going to affect me as well so if i allow you to continue in foolishness without speaking about it you're going to take decisions that are going to come back and affect me so however you want to look at it whether you want to look at it as someone who is trying to help or someone who is trying to help herself if we're trying to help ourselves it's the same thing the bottom line is the churches teach you to not have sense and that is what happened to this girl but the particular problem with this one and the people who do these things in nigeria is that Nigeria is a country where this procedure is new. Nigeria is a country where people know that whoever is performing something may not actually be maintaining or living up to the standards that they're supposed to. We have a standards organization that you know that probably the officials will come and someone can just pay them and they won't meet the standards of the procedure and they will allow them to continue to function. And so for someone to know that this is a procedure where their life can be lost, where there's a 50-50 chance of losing their life and they still go ahead to do this, that is because this is a person who is coming from a society where they've been taught over the years. She was 36 years old at the time of death. So for over three decades, she has learned that I can take decisions and do things where I am just going to hope and pray that the results will be good at the end of the day. I'm going to hope and pray that I'll be lucky at the end of the day. I live in North America. What we do here is that nobody takes chances with day-to-day -day life. What we do is that every time that we're going to take a decision on, or an action, we know that if we have a negative result at the end of the day, we're not be able to come out of it with everything intact. So we're going to be very careful with every decision that we're taking. Even people who have left Nigeria to come and live in North America, they're a different set of people. And they're a different set of people. You think that society doesn't affect you? It does. Our society is one where... Our society is one where people are taught to take action and hope for the best. Take action and pray. Take action and you'll have unmerited favor. Take action and hope and do, do everything in faith. People, people are even encouraged to put money towards something in faith that they will have a return. People are encouraged to marry, get married to this person in faith that things will work out. They're encouraged to have children, even when it's a risk, in faith that it will work out. They're encouraged to have children by natural birth, even when it's a risk, and you've heard everything else, just do it by faith. If you're doing it for other reasons, fine, but when it's just because you are hoping, believing, and you're going to pray, even when circumstances are showing you something different, this is a mentality that is... This is a mentality that is causing people to live in misery. If you're one of those people who will do something, there are two issues that I'm dealing with here. One of them is needing the validation of other people. And the second one is doing things even when you can see everything around it, you can see that it's risky, but you're still taking the, the decision based on faith. If you're taking the decision because it's like, I have no other choice, that's a different matter. If you're taking the decision because, yes, I just want to do it and see what... We, that is fine. But when you're taking the decision with the belief that when I pray about it or I will just hope for the best because it's what you've been used to doing over the years, then this is where you see how dangerous it is to be having this mindset. And this is what happens because at the age of 36, for over three decades, she has been living with people who every, at least once a week, that is going to church at least on Sundays, once a week, and it's reinforced over and over every week that you don't have to depend on your senses, you don't have to depend on rational thinking, you don't have to depend on reasoning, depend on faith, you will have unmerited favor. Let me read out what I wrote about this. I wrote, and I want you to just think about it and see if this is you. And when you have children or if you have children, be sure to make sure that your children use their brains, use their senses to take decisions and to take action. After you've done everything, you've done your due diligence, and there is nothing more you can do, then you can talk about hope, and you can talk about hoping for the best, and you can talk about praying for the best. Yes, of course, pray before you go, but don't take action because you're hoping that the risk that you've taken will turn out in your favor. Here's what I wrote. 
I said, only a person who has not been used to using their brains will think it doable to walk into a place like that and risk their life in a country where the procedure is newly introduced with a practitioner who is newly licensed in a country that may not insist on standard practice with a person who could even easily pay for the standards organization to overlook whatever they've set up in their, in their practice. So only a person who is used to not using their brains will submit themselves to this type of risk. And I go ahead to say that once upon a time, I would deride a person who died in the process of getting the BBL. I already said that earlier. But now I have begun to understand. It wasn't until I decided to take action and teach people about not seeking validation of others that I began to actually, actually understand what our society is like. Because I was trying to tell this lady during a counseling session that she would never get the validation of her partner that she was struggling to get, at least not by struggling for it. It won't happen that way. But you see, you've grown up thinking that I can just do everything this way and that way and hope for the best. No, when you're meeting a person who has a certain way of doing things, a certain way of living, certain characteristics, they are who they are. You cannot hope that you're going to change them just by you doing this and that, taking the risk of even marrying them. Do everything sure before thinking about marrying them. And if it has worked after after you've done it, then you can think about marrying them. But you cannot go ahead to base things on hope and base things that you have a merited favor as you've been taught and ignore all the things that you see and be hoping for a miracle. Life just doesn't work like that. If you take that kind of risk, you're going to learn. Why do you think that other church was fighting this thing that was brought telling them that they should start to do things this way is because they understand the impact and the influence of churches on people. They understand that this is a major way that people will be influenced. They just don't want the ideas that are being brought in with that to become what will be used in that, in that area as long as they could um, influence it. And so church is a, a major part of a society's life. So whatever the church is teaching, is what the people are going to eventually imbibe, right? This is the reason why they resisted it. Discourage your children from the company of anyone who recommends suspending the use of their senses. I, I ask you to discourage your children from attending those types of churches where they encourage you to just base your decisions on good thoughts and faith and unmerited favor and expecting unmerited favor and hoping for the best. It's going to work against you. It's going to teach your children to do things the wrong way. Remember that the brain is like a muscle. Whatever way it's being exercised is the way that it's going to get used to doing things. It's the way that it's going to get used to seeing things. So if you want your children to be people who take action based on facts and sensible rationing, sensible reasoning, if you want your children to be people who take action based on facts and sensible reasoning, then discourage your children from being corrupted and polluted by these people. Not saying you shouldn't go to church, but watch the church that your cho your children are going to. Watch the church where you allow your children to be influenced. And I go ahead to say, had she been spending time with people who instead, once a week, gave her useful insights to life, encouraged the use of one's senses and reasoning and rational thinking and understanding, instead of encouragement to ignore facts, instead of the encouragement to ignore facts and reasoning, then she and many others will process things differently in life. And then somebody watching this is going to say, oh, but what about the parents? And I say back to you, the parents, what parents are we talking about? The parents who are living in the same society where they were brought up in the same society with the same set of rules and with the same ideas. Parents who, when their children talk, they will say to the children, she don't talk, just listen and obey and do as you're told, obey before complain. Those are the parents that we're talking about. So you see, the parents cannot even teach their children different because they, they learn the same thing as well. They were shushed. You cannot talk. You cannot express yourself. You cannot be true to yourself. You have to get the validation of other people. You have to listen to what other people tell you. And that is the life that you should live. You should suspend your own brain and suspend your own thinking because you cannot understand the things of the spirit. Anyway, so the long and short of this is let's look inwards at ourselves. Even when we don't do things that we consider outrageous like deciding to go and do a BBL. What are the other things that we're doing by ourselves that are not sincere and genuine to us, but are being done for the validation of other people? What are the other things that we're doing where we do not, where we take action and we 
ignore the risks involved because we are hoping for the best. Let's begin to become conscious of these things. We cannot take decisions and actions after we have seen the risks and then we just say to ourselves, it's going to be well, it's going to be well with me, it is well with me, I am going to pray and I'm going to hope for the best. Let's begin to unlearn all this nonsense. Let's unlearn all this nonsense. I'm older now. I can only speak for the younger ones and for those who are raising kids and for little ones, young ones that are around me. We should teach people to not, not be accepting teachings, doctrines that tell you to just, just do it. Do it in faith. It's wrong because people have gone on. I told you earlier, I hope people have gone on to marry the wrong person. People have gone on to have children that they shouldn't have tried having. They've lost their lives. They've got children who have um, who have sicknesses. A lot of negative, painful things have come into people's lives because they just accepted wrong teachings that encourage people to not use reasoning in taking decisions. Actually, you know what? Something just occurred to me. Let me add this other video. Because when I talk about wanting people's validation, you see this guy, this guy is teaching people to uh, grow their butt with exercise. Now, this one I can recommend. And then you might say to yourself, but why do they want to grow their butt if it's not too impressive? See, here's the thing. There's a difference. Sometimes you want to do things because they make you feel better about yourself. I mean, it's natural that there's something that will help you feel better about yourself, right? That's just a natural thing. But the difference is that you don't take a decision that's going to risk your life. Or you don't take a decision that's going to put you in harm's way just to impress other people. If you want to impress other people, let it be something that doesn't cost you too much. Your life is just too much to put on the balance just to impress other people. That's the whole point. If you take it the way this guy is going, if you take it with learning, doing exercise, like learning with this guy or whoever, whatever else, if you take it by taking... The price you have to pay is exercise, effort, time. And with everything that you give effort and time, you're actually improving yourself in many ways more than what you set out to do. That is way different from risking your life, spending your money, hard and cash, just to impress other people. The payoff is just not worth it. Oh gosh, I keep remembering things. And you know, I was already ending the video and then I remembered something. Besides that, there's an even bigger issue here. When you're trying to get validation from other people, here is something. It's a never-ending thing. If you notice, people who do these things, they always keep going back for more. Today, they're going to do something different. Tomorrow is something different. That's because the validation needs to come from the inside. As long as it's something on the outside that you need to validate you, to, to, recom to, uh, to say that you are now good, it's never going to end. Because there will always be something that you think that they need to see to see you in a better light. And, you know, in the past, I had already even made a video where I talked about wanting somebody's validation and how you can't get it and how it's you punishing yourself. I haven't uploaded that. I'm going to upload it. Now, I think I have to make a, a complete video talking about how it works in the spirit realm. These are the things that we should have been learning from church, from the people who are supposed to teach about uh, the spirit, the spirit realm, and how things work, rather than making your brain empty, because you will see how the spirit is what manifests. The spiritual is what manifests into the physical. I'm going to make a video of that, and I'm going to title it. I don't know what I'm going to title it. Um, maybe something with. Seeking validation and spirituality. Speaking right, validation. What seeking validation does to you spiritually? Okay, maybe that's what I'll do, so that you can easily find it. And if I don't, leave a comment here so that I asking me what I title that, so that you can easily find it when I do it in a few days. Okay. I hope this has sent a message to you and that you're going to share it with other people. Remember, this is a new channel. I want you to share this video, like it, give me a comment or two because that helps the video to get to more people. 
and share with other people and let me know if this is going to have a positive impact on your life. Thank you.